Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel, Reselling Farming Mom. For those of you that don't know, my name is Ashley. Tonight we are going to go through what sold this week as well as everything I have shipping out this weekend. This is my second try. Um, as I was sitting here earlier, um, things started chiming and I wanted to make sure I could show you everything I'm shipping out tonight. So I had to stop, go get items and get them out and we're trying this again. So it's just me tonight. Um, the hubby is out at practice. So we're going to talk about what's sold this week, what's shipping out tonight. I will hit on my whatnot sale last night, as well as what we've got going on here in the next couple of weeks, because I know that my title says reselling farming mom and all we talk about is reselling. So stay tuned till the end. You don't want to miss this. All right, guys, so let's dig into these sales from this week. I want to tell you right now, I said it for the last couple weeks, the last few videos, I was going to get back into the groove. Well, this week I finally did. The proof is in the pudding. Daily listing improves sales immensely. I don't know what it is with the algorithm of eBay, but it has just, this week has been a complete 360 or 180, I think it's a 180 because 360 is all the way. <laughs> but it has swung our sales up crazily. Um, I've been shipping out almost every day, at least four packages. And on top of that, I received an email earlier this week from eBay about improving traffic to my store by offering either, I don't know, I have to look into it. They said if I offer one day shipping, or 30 day free returns that it would improve my traffic. I'm not really supportive of offering 30 day returns, but I could possibly offer one day shipping. Now that the holidays are over and that I can schedule USPS pickups at my front door, it has changed my life. I am no longer struggling to get to the post office on my lunch breaks at work. I can have my packaging done the night before and I set up my pickups and they pick them up at my front door. So I'm able to ship much more consistently. So I would love to know what your guys' opinions are on that. I'm currently at top rated seller status on eBay. I'm super proud of that. Um, but I'm really curious what you guys are doing with your eBay stores and how you handle things. Um, I know most resellers, I don't know all of them, but the ones I watch, like they don't do returns. I, I'm not, I'm not ready to jump through that hoop. <laughs> so, but the one day shipping, I think I could swing that. So make sure you leave your comments down below. I want to know, I want to read because someone commented last week about bags and he mentioned produce bags. So I actually looked up produce bags on Amazon and I found where I could find a, get a roll of 500 10 by 13 clear produce bags for I think $15. I did the math and it, with the tax, it was only like three cents a piece. So I ordered a roll. I will let you guys know they should be here in a few days. I'll make sure I let you guys know how they work out. I have not listed any more ads since I finally finished the first magazine. Um, I pulled 40 ads from one magazine. And as you guys know, I'm selling the ads for $5.95. I actually have one that sold this week, um, this during the last week. Um, so that's my fourth ad sale out of one magazine that I was selling for anywhere from one to $3. So it's crazy. If anyone's interested in buying up one of these magazines, you know, maybe we can make a deal, so. Let's get to these sales though. I'm, I squirreled on you and it's I haven't even talked about sales yet. All right. So first up, we had a Corning Pyrex Vision Wear Amber Cookware two and a half liter saucepan pot with lid. Um, I've, this is, I think the second one of these I've sold. I actually sold this one twice because the first person that bought it did not want to pay, actually did not want to respond to me at all. I picked this up at the Goodwill, I think for $3, it might have been four. Um, it sold for 15. I had it listed for 20 um, and they sent me a pretty low ball offer and they worked, I got them up to 15 and I accepted it because I've been picking these vision wear pieces up because I another reseller I see thrifter sifter picks them up 
And so I've been picking them up religiously and I've not been selling them as fast as I would like. So I accepted the, I think it was 11 or $12 profit, which is still a good profit. Um, it wasn't overly difficult to ship. So, and I see it was delivered. So I got it there. Super happy about that. So that was the first one. Next was a vintage Pyrex Amber Brown scalloped three band custard cups. It was a set of eight. I picked these up at the Goodwill. I paid $4 for all eight of them. I sold them for $16.95. That again, I think was another offer, but it was only a couple dollars less than what I had listed at. I think I had it listed at like $19.95. So that's another thing I watch. I'm trying to figure out when I was growing up, I worked at a Christmas store and I asked the owner, you know, one day, why is everything sold for something 95? Why don't we sell things for even numbers? And they told me when I was, you know, 14 years old, that's a long time ago, that things that are not even numbers sell faster. So I have been messing around with selling things at even numbers versus selling it at, you know, instead of 20, 1995. I don't know if it makes a difference, but it's just something I've been doing lately. So the next sale was a vintage kitsch, hutch, ki vintage kitsch, like K-I-T-S-C-H, kitsch, kitchen hutch cabinet teapot with fruits and vegetables. Um, I picked up about, I want to say 16 teapots at a, on an online auction a month or two ago. I mean, my husband go pick them all up. I paid about a dollar to two dollars a piece for each teapot when it all came out. Um, this one sold for $16. It was our first teapot that we actually sold. I think we put a couple of mystery boxes on whatnot, but this is the first eBay sale. So woohoo! The next thing that sold was, you guys, I told you, this was a crazy week. We're just gonna keep going and going and going. And I am trying not to squirrel on you too much, but it's it's bound to happen. So the next one was a Calfline Sear, Unison Sear Space Saving Five Quart Stock Pot with Lid. Picked it up at the Goodwill for $5. It was in excellent condition. I always look over the pots and pans because you just never know what's there. And I know Calflon is a really good brand name. If I had, if it had fit in with my pots and pans, I might've actually considered keeping it, but I didn't have space for it. So I listed it and I sold it for $20 on eBay. Next up was another one of the cat's meows that we got in that $4 bag. I'm telling you that $4 bag is, was awesome. I had no clue that it was going to be so great because I have like five or six other cat's meows that have been listed for close to a year for a lot less than what these are listed for. And they, I've only sold a few of a couple of them, but these cat's meows, let me tell you, this one was the Cincinnati gardens, home of Xavier basketball. And this one sold for $9.95. And like I said, I think I was 50 cents in on each one, maybe, because I didn't even count them. I just listed them all. So, and then I told you there, there was another ad. So this one was a 1957 Dow Chemical Company print ad from Midland, Michigan. I also put in the title that a car was on a lift because that was the only way I could think to describe this ad. There'll be a picture of it right here. Um, it was all black and white. Uh, I have no clue what the Dow Chemical Company is, but I did not, just, I pulled every ad, every single ad I could find that I could get that wasn't, you know, on the other side of another one. I, big or small, I listed them all. So this one sold for $4. Um, I think they offered me four and I was okay with that because I know where I'm getting them from. So that's why I have them listed the way I do, because I want everyone to be able to enjoy them. So then we have, I sold some Corel. This Corel was actually not listed for very long at all. I think it sold in a day, maybe two days. This was a Corel by Corning Callaway set of six salad plates. These are the swirl plates with the dark green border and then the ivy leaves on them. They are nine inches. The set of six sold for $20. So I was $3 in on that. I should have said that first. I don't know. If you watch me, you know I pay 50 cents a piece on plates. So 
and the set of six sold for 20. I think I had them listed at 22, but $20 for six plates is pretty good. So I was happy with that. Oh my gosh, I have like this huge mess in my hair. Sorry, everyone. It distracted me. <laughs> Then we had another teapot. So our second teapot sale came in. Uh, this was a Hudson Middleton Lady Diana teapot. It was fine bone china with a swirl. And then I put floral and gold accents. It sold for $19.95. So right there, I between those two teapots, I have done, made my money on what I paid for all the teapots. Plus I'm in the profit and I have more teapots to sell. So teapots are a hit or miss. You know, you always got to check out the teapots. I feel like there's something that people overlook or they just don't want to deal with. And they're really not that difficult to ship. So the egg cartons, I'm telling you, bubble wrap, egg cartons, and newspaper, and you're golden. Just get the big USP. Then you don't even pay for the big USPS boxes. And if you're like me, we raise chickens. And so we have egg cartons. Granted, we're going through them very quickly. Um, but people save them for you. All you have to do is ask. Be like, hey, can you save up your egg cartons? Nobody has an issue with saving up egg cartons. It's like a thing. I don't know if it's a thing where you live, but I live in Ohio, the Midwest. It's a Midwest thing. You just save things like newspapers. You don't throw your newspapers away. No one that I know throws away their newspapers. They set them somewhere in a box or a basket or a basket or a crock like they just stack them up until they're just a bunch of the newspapers nobody throws their newspapers away it's the same thing with egg cartons somebody they stack them up on top of their fridge or on top of a cupboard you know so you just got to find those people that have the newspapers and have the egg cartons and they're not taking them anywhere because they're there you just have to find them if you want to save on your dunnage costs i'm telling you find find the people that don't throw away things they're out there Next up, we're almost, we're almost there guys. We're almost to this week's sales. Once we get through these, throughout the week sales, we'll talk about whatnot, I promise. We're almost there. Next was a vintage federal starburst mixing bowl, one and a half quart. I put that it was uh, MCM for mid-century modern cause it was um, atomic black and gold, which I think I found that um, description with a Google image search. It was a really neat shaped bowl with black and gold. I do not know how much I paid for it. Um, it was something I had had for quite a while. It sold for $10. It was a little faded, so I was okay with that. Then we had some clothes sell, you guys. I'm telling you, I've been dedicated to listing. I'm going to get through these death piles. I'm going to get through these. I've still got four racks of clothes. I'm going to get through this. And I started looking up sold comps on clothes and I started listing clothes again. Uh, this was an Alfred Dunner two-piece blazer and skirt suit set, size 16, 18, navy blue. I'm practically free on it. We've done made our money on this estate sale buyout that happened in June of last year. Maybe a quarter in, if that. Sold for $18.25. So that was pretty awesome. Next was a PM Dawn Set Adrift on Memory Bliss. This was a cassette tape single. Again, probably a quarter in, if that. Might have got it for free. Sold for $4.65. These next couple sales blew my mind, guys. These all happened on Friday. Friday while I was at work. When I go in, went to lunch and I went to break, I saw these sales and I'm just like, oh my goodness, why am I having to work this nine to five? Because if I can do this, and why can't I do this every day? Um, first was a vintage Sony VCR VHS tape player, four head hi-fi stereo. Um, I put it was untested in the description because I did not want to test a VCR. I actually sat on this VCR for probably three months because I was all nerves when it came to listing it. Um, but I did because the proof is in the pudding, guys. I was listing like mad this last week. Sold for $49.95 untested. Picked it up at the Goodwill for five bucks. About three months ago, it sat in my basement because I was terrified to list it. But... I listed it and it sold. So, whew. the next item was a Sonoma Halloween jack-o'-lantern bull ghost 
Okay, it was a jack-o'-lantern bowl. Like the bowl had jack-o'-lanterns on the outside of it. And then on the inside of the bowl was a ghost figure. Like it was a little ghost. He was attached to the bowl, but he was like popped up out of it. It was a 10 inch bowl across. I picked it up at the Goodwill a couple weeks ago. I paid a dollar for it because it was out of season, like super out of season. Like we're in post Christmas stuff, getting into Valentine's Day, thinking about Easter. And I picked up this Halloween bowl. I actually couldn't believe I found it. Sonoma, I'm pretty sure is like a brand you get at Kohl's. Not super fancy, but it sold for $25. 25 bucks for a Halloween bowl in January. Can you believe it? So make sure you can still list stuff even though it's not in season. Just saying, there's people obsessed with their holidays. I personally just spent $30 on vintage Christmas ornaments yesterday when I went out shopping with grandma, so. Then the last sale from Friday was a vintage Robin Hood, like the Robin Hood, the movie, the Disney movie. Uh, John, Prince John the Lion 19 inch plush from Sears. Um, I actually had I have two of them, so I have one left. He sold for $19.95. I think I paid two or three dollars for him at the Goodwill. Typically, plush at the Goodwill is a dollar, and I was actually kind of upset because this girl rang me up for three dollars on these plushes, and this was I've had him for a while. He was not a fast sale by any means. He's a good profit in the end, but he was not a fast sale. So, but now I always check out the plushes at the Goodwill or any thrift store garage sale I go to because they might be slow sellers, but they are the easiest ships that you can imagine. And if they're small enough, you can fit them in a padded mailer. So, and even then you, you put them in a bag and then you put them in a box. I always make sure I put my plushes in something before I put them in the box. I'm very, like, I'm terrified of water damage. Water is like the number one enemy of people. And I would hate for it to be raining and the box be just set outside and they're ruined. I've had uh, cookbooks actually, I've ordered from Amazon that they just set them in a puddle outside and they were completely ruined. So make sure your plushes you are bagging before you're putting in the box because sometimes things happen life happens and you don't want you know it you might not have an extra one to send and then you're out that second shipping cost and then there goes all your profits so just keep that in mind when you're shipping guys let's talk about whatnot and We'll briefly touch on the Christmas for Kids fundraiser. My husband's not here, like I said earlier, so I do not have any exact numbers. We are still middle of the month, but I can tell you a few things, guys. We are steadily gaining subscribers, so thank you, everyone, for subscribing to my YouTube channel. I greatly appreciate it. Anything you can do to help us grow is so awesome, and you don't even know how much I, I really do appreciate it. So I want to recap for everyone that's new. Every we are running a fundraiser um, from December 1st of last year until I think December 1st of this year. The dates, the dates may be a little wishy-washy depending on when we can donate the money. I don't want to donate it too late. Um, we are going to take for every subscriber we get on YouTube, every video liked on YouTube, every sale on eBay, every new, I can't hold this finger up, every new follower on whatnot and every sale on whatnot. We are going to keep track of all of them and for each one is going to be a penny in the pot. Um, and then at the end of the year, Reselling Farming Mom, me, will match however much is raised from all of you guys. And we are going to donate that money to a local Christmas for Kids charity. I'm super excited about this. Since we have announced this, we have gained so many subscribers on YouTube. Our videos are getting liked. We are getting so much interaction from you guys. And it just makes me so happy. It makes me feel like, you know, I'm actually like reaching people. So thank you again. If you want to share the videos, you're more than welcome. Um, I don't care. Whatever you can do to get them pushed out. I can also tell you, so we're gaining two to three subscribers steadily. 
um, on YouTube every couple days. Uh, the likes, I see likes, I see comments. My husband keeps track of the numbers, not me. He's the tech savvy one in the family. I'm just, you know, the lister. <laughs> um, and last night we had a whatnot sale. Um, we are trying to clear out some of the old stock, unlisted stock, uh, death pile, um, because we are trying to create space in the basement where I, I work from. Um, I have to have room where we used to do our videos. I have to make space for a couple of long tables because here in the next, within the next month, we have to start seeds for this spring. And then um, I think in a month, to two months we will have baby chicks and the baby chicks also come into the basement so we have been we had the whatnot sale last night in order to try to clear space make space um we did okay it wasn't a huge sale um we sold eight items i think so and we gained about 20 followers on whatnot last night as well um stuff sales on whatnot are hit and miss uh, I personally really enjoy the mystery box sales that we've done in the past. You, we get a lot of people on there. We have a good time. I, we just sell the stuff, but stuff sales, like you have to get everything out. You have to lay, it's almost like opening your own little store in your basement or wherever you're doing it. And I'm just, I'm not sold on it guys. I'm just not there yet. Um, but I'm done with the clothes sales on whatnot. I can tell you that for a fact. Um, I see like the people that are doing it and killing it, it's awesome. Um, but I don't have the name brands. I'm not trying to go buy a palette of returns name brands. So right now I think I'm gonna stick in my groove. Um, I'm really pushing on eBay this next month or two. Um, before we get super overwhelmed with everything going on outside. So let me tell you what we have going out tonight though, because again, this is my second take because we had, uh, my, I was going off when I was starting. So I figured I might as well just take a step back and get it out for you so you can see it all and I'll tell you a story about it. So first up, first one was a Presto Power Pop <laughs> Orville Redenbacher. I did not like thrift this myself, guys. This was in a box of stuff I got at an auction. So if you want to watch out for these, you can. I sold it for $8. Not a bad sale. It did take up quite a bit of space in the tote. So, um, but still, it sold. You can sell. I, I have seen these before at the thrift store. I did not pick it up. I knew I already had one that was still waiting to sell. So, but... I was probably less than a dollar in because, like I said, there was a box. There was a Pyrex bowl and other stuff. So about a dollar, I want to say, maybe less. Sold it for $8. Then we have, okay, let me set this down. So Foghorn Leghorn auction haul video. If you watched it, I showed you all kinds of this yellow rooster, and I kept telling you how I couldn't remember the name. It is Early Provincial Rooster. I think we've talked about it since then, but I just wanted to clear the air. It is Early Provincial Rooster. This is the coffee canister. It was listed as the coffee canister with no lid. I put in the title that it had no lid in all capital letters. Um, I sold it Saturday, <laughs> less than a dollar in. I had it listed for 18. I've had it for a while. Someone sent me an offer of $10. It was less, it was almost half of what it was listed at. So she sent me the offer at $10 and I accepted it because it, again, it had been sitting on the shelf for a while. I knew it didn't have a lid. In a previous life, I think someone was using it as a planter. I had washed it up, but I still, it wasn't, it's not in its prime. So it's in really good condition though, but then I received a message an hour later after the buyer paid and she told me she was unhappy with the shipping costs and she was just so upset that it didn't have a lid and I was trying to tell her that I'm sorry it doesn't have a lid you know but in the title it clearly said it didn't have a lid but I didn't even get my message all typed up and she just 
asked for another item and wanted that item with free shipping. So I said, sure, that's fine. You know, just I'll, I revised the item she wanted and <laughs> let her have it for free shipping with the understanding that it would go in the same box. So the canister I got for less than a dollar sold for $10. And then she also bought the cheese dish for six forty. dollars Now, this could go for a lot more than six forty, dollars And I hope, I really hope she read that it was as is. It said as is with stars and all capital letters in the title. Um, it looks, it's beautiful. And if you position it just, if you put it this side out on your cabinet or in your china cabinet or on display, it's fine. Um, but it does, the cover, it's two pieces and it has a crack right along here. And it was all put in the pictures and stuff. I didn't have, usually you guys, if it's got a chip, I'm like, toss it. I throw stuff away all the time. If I miss something, I will have stuff in the wastebasket. You know, I just, I'm not, I don't have time for it. But this was too pretty. It was too pretty. So I listed it at 640 and she bought both of them. So I'm happy that they're going to a home. I'm happy to see them get off my shelf. I'm ready for some more space. Some space, guys. I'm ready for some space. We had more Corel sell as well. A set of four, um, the three black stripe border corral plates. I think they're cafe black. These are 10 and a quarter inch stair plates. There are four of them. They're in excellent condition. I am $2 in on these set of four corral plates and they sold for $20. So I actually sold a set of corral plates on whatnot last night too. I, they wanted to see plates and I showed them the plates and they're like, oh man. I'm like, yeah, they, they were asking what patterns I had. And I said, it would be a lot easier if you just told me what pattern you're looking for. So two more, three more, three more. Cause we have the last one. So this lot, this is a lot of nine. I really don't want to get them out cause they're felt and they feel funny on my hands. Um, well, my husband will pop the thing up, the sold listing up right here. This is a lot of nine Pacific silver cloth, um, anti-tarnish bags, which they all have zippers on them. There were six smaller ones and three larger ones. The lot, it actually sold in less than a week. Um, the lot of nine, yeah, there's nine, sold for $15 and they're really light. They're going to be super easy to ship and they're in the crinkly bag. Then I had a sweater sell out of the estate sale hall. This was an Aeropostale sweater, so it must have not been the older couple's clothes, but somebody that was younger that had their stuff mixed in. Um, it's bright orange. It's a V-neck, like cable knit, Aeropostale size large sweater. Um, less than a quarter in. Um, I'm in the profit now. Sold for $10. And I mean... With its number in, in a bag, in a tote, I listed it and I forgot about it. I can't even tell you what clothes are in that tote anymore because I can't remember. And then the last sale of the day, the sale that stopped my take was, this is a Fisherman's Cove by Colin Go, the Danbury Mint. This is the uh, Boat Marina repair piece. I had picked up four pieces of this uh, collection. Um, my husband actually spotted them at the Goodwill. They were, at the Goodwill, they were $3 a piece. Um, and he looked them up. He was so excited. We actually had two carts. We had a competition that night who could fill their cart with all of the treasures the best. Um, it, he had his cart and I had my cart. He had these in there and we got them home. It was raining. So we had them just each one in its own bag and we brought them in and then they sat, they sat down here for a couple weeks before I actually, you know, this week got them out and listed them. Um, and let me tell you guys, if you're picking these things up, make sure that just because it sells for $100 for the set of four, 
that you're not blinded by the prophets. Um, I think my husband was blinded. We, we both were blinded by the prophets. I saw the sold comp. I looked at them, but I didn't look at them. And when I was going to list them, I looked at them and I saw what we didn't see at the Goodwill when we bought them, that they were not perfect by any means. Um, we had picked up four of them and with the intentions of listing them together as a set, I ended up only keeping three of them. I think, oh, it's already out the wastebasket or I would have showed you the one I threw out. Um, they had there was some minor chipping on the one had a pretty decent sized chip like one of the houses was missing its chimney um another one had just a little bit of chippage but it just when you looked at them really close it looked like something had pressed down on it um this one's not too bad you can see like there's a lifeguard that's not there and this buoy is broke off, but I listed them. I took tons of pictures. I listed it and I put it as is, and I put in the, in the description, I put, please review all pictures very closely. Item is as is. So like they know what they're getting themselves into. I sold this one. We paid $3 for it. It sold for $25. So it's still an excellent profit. It's just not the profit it could have been, I want to say, because um, I still have two more that are listed. Um, just That's my public service announcement. Make sure you guys look things over really well. Don't be blinded by profits. I heard another, blinded by profits you don't have. I actually heard another reseller say that on his YouTube channel. He was talking about scammers, and he's like, don't be, something about don't be blinded by profits that on like you profits you don't have um granted we still made a really great profit so maybe you can pick them up as is but make sure you look things over really really well I am really bad about getting excited about something and bringing it home and then I throw it away <laughs> um plates I'm notorious for when I look them over before I list them um I'm tossing them so that's all I've got for tonight Make sure that you check for chips, guys. Be the fun sponge. If you can't be the fun sponge, take somebody with you that is. My grandma is a great chip checker. I love when we go thrifting together because she can be the best fun sponge ever when it comes to treasures. Because she, one time I tried to pick up this Boyd's Bears cookie jar canister and she's like, it has a giant crack, Ashley, and it did all the way down the center. And I think it's still sitting at the Goodwill six months later. So everyone had their fun sponges with them when they looked at that. But I'm done squirreling. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe.